In this video, we're going to verify the impedance of this piece of coax. This is the Fujikura piece of coax. And the way you do it is you just put a VR onto a BNC connector like this here. I've uh, put it on a BNC connector and put the BNC connector onto a T and just using this as the barrel connector here. The center leg is soldered to the center of the BNC and one outer leg is soldered to the, to the outer case of the uh, barrel. The other leg is left open. And then we'll plug this to the end of our coax here and we'll see what happens here. So what we see here is a short. So the VR is closed. So it's at zero ohms right now. And that's what a short would look like if you had it at the end of your coax. Whereas if it was like this, it would be open. So I'll plug this back in and I'll rotate this VR until we find the correct impedance. Now, when we get this balanced out in the screen, this will be around the right impedance. So we're right, uh, right about, move this around, right about there is the right impedance of our coax. This is the impedance bump here of the, of the BNC itself and the barrel connector. So I've rotated this to balance this out, this piece of the trace out as far as I can into the impedance bump in order to verify its rough impedance. So this will be around the right impedance. And so what we'll do is we remove this barrel connector here and we're going to measure this with our ohm meter here. So we're, now we're measuring the resistance of the actual VR itself on, on the end. So I hope this is going to stay on for me. I'll shut this off and hold the button here for a second. This TX3 meter has been absolutely wonderful. It's a great Tektronics meter. If you have a chance to own one or get one for cheap, definitely pick it up from a swap meet. They're just indestructible. They've got a wonderful display, really big numbers, and um, you know have pretty much all the functions you need in a meter. I've owned this one since 1999, and uh, as you can see, it looks like it's been driven over with a truck. But uh, it, um, yeah, it still works absolutely perfect. Doesn't uh, no hiccups, no nothing. The only one downside on this thing is, is it uses two double A's, and it is a bit of a battery pig. Okay, that's about the only downside to that TX3 that I can find, anyways. So there we go, 76 ohms, 76.4 ohms. So we know that this is a, a chunk of 75 ohm coax. If I breathe on this potentiometer or just touch it with my finger, you'll see the impedance changes. See that? That's just touching it with my finger. It's a very sensitive VR. So we know that this piece of coax is 75 ohm coax, and it's just that simple. So in the second half of this, we'll look at putting a barrel connector in line with another piece of coax and see what that looks like. We'll short the end of the coax, we'll short the barrel connector, and uh, I'll give you all sorts of different scenarios of looking at your piece of coax or transmission line and all the different areas of faults and what they would look like. So I'll see you in the next shot. Here we have two pieces of coax joined with a barrel connector. I'm just holding this in my hand so you see the movement on the screen here. This is the barrel connector. This is the first run of Fujikura coax, and this is the second run of coax that we had, which was used in our velocity factor test. This is what it looks like here in the center with the impedance bump. I'll turn that up so you can kind of see what it looks like. So that's the impedance bump in the center of the coax there. TDR pulse, barrel connector, end of coax. That's what it looks like. This is round trip time that we're going to be looking at again. So I'll turn this back down. Other way. I've got this averaging, so it's a little bit slow to my response here. What I'm going to do now is I'll turn the cursors on. And I'll move this to here and this to here. And we see that we're 87.20 nanoseconds is the time, the round trip time from the TDR pulse through the barrel connector to the end of the coax and back again. All right. So that's the entire length of our coax is 87.20 nanoseconds divided by two, which will uh, give us the one way time. Now what I'll do is I'll short the end of the coax, find the end of the coax here and I'll short it. And you'll notice that we'll get an inverted an inverted uh, reflection at the end there. There we go. We can still see the barrel connector quite clearly in the center there or close to the center. And I'll remove this. Now I'll short the barrel connector and leave the end open and you'll see that this impedance bump will look like it'll transfer here and the inversion will go here. So this is with a shorted barrel connector and 
an open end. Okay, so there you go. So the short is at the barrel connector, and we can see what looks to be like an impedance bump, which is the open end of the coax. And that's the different scenarios that we'll get with uh, a run of coax with a barrel in it, and what they'll look like with a whole bunch of different situations. And there you have it. Hope you enjoyed this episode of trying to determine impedance and looking at uh, coax with barrel connectors in it. If you did, give it a thumbs up, and I'll see you in the next video, which I'll be using this TDR uh, hooked up to a bunch of my older oscilloscopes and showing you what it looks like on a more limited bandwidth oscilloscope. It's really quite usable with uh, most scopes, even the old tech series scopes. I've got the uh, an old 500 series scope that I'll put this TDR on and uh, give you a rundown of that. So that'll be in the next video. So I'll see you then.